to the moon. You know, one of the things that, um, a as a life coach and um, just as a, a perpetual seeker, one of the uh, themes is um, marrying the inside to the outside, you know, body, mind, spirit. And uh, a lot of people experience, them, experience themselves and their lives in very segmented ways. Mm -hmm. uh, my work life, my artistic life, my, uh, it seems to me that you very naturally marry all of it, that there's such a, a powerful integration mm -hmm. and that it would be almost impossible to separate. Yeah, no, there's absolutely, I don't, people say, what's your job? I say, well, I don't have a job. I don't consider myself having a job. Um, mm -hmm. I work with NASA, I work with Princeton, I paint. My life is all integrated. There's absolutely no uh, what job, there's no paycheck, there's none of that. It's, it's all integrated. Right, right. It's very cool. Uh, so the next painting is, and I seem to remember, this is in the latest period you're in, yes? Yeah, these are the latest ones. I'm actually doing these now. Um, this is what the Metropolitan Opera House is actually interested in these paintings, as are a lot of other people. These are uh, different in, in the sense that, as you saw from the last piece, it started to get more broken up a little bit, and the other ones are more tight. This one is just an explosion. It's completely open up, very Pollock-esque. You know, not quite as open as Jackson Pollock. It's not quite that far, but it's in that direction, probably close to it. And what this, what these represent are the uh, microwave uh, radiation uh, left over from the Big Bang of the universe. So in the universe we think was created 15 billion years ago, there was a gigantic explosion, and the heat is left over today. And the satellites that NASA has, uh, called one of them called WMAP, uh, actually picked up a very faint trace of the heat, and they made this incredible map of the universe based on the microwave radiation, which has a sig a significance of where the universe came from. And Princeton University is very instrumental in that major discovery, and someone got the Nobel Prize at, at NASA for it uh, just uh, two years ago. Um, any event, the way they look at the microwaves is they, they color it red when it's hot and, and yellow when it's not quite as hot, and then blue when it's cold, and they have this map of the universe. And I said, well, that's pretty cool. And someone suggested to me, a professor at Princeton, who's a very good friend of mine, Richard Gott, uh, who's a world-famous uh, astrophysicist, he suggested to me five years ago, why don't you do a painting of the map of the universe uh, this microwave map, and I said, it's too complicated. I don't want to do that. And he kept urging me to do it. Then finally, I saw a little piece of the map of the universe. Ah. And I said, no, that looks like a Pollock. I could do that. And I've, since then, I've been absolutely obsessed with doing microwave painting. So I did the first one I did actually emulated the real scientific data. And then I went off and started painting people, buildings, places as microwaves. So this one's entitled Microwaves in the Sky. And I was just visiting um, Bogota, Colombia, where I have a visiting professorship down there at, the, at, at Columbia, South America. I did one down there, which I gave to the math department. It's called Microwaves Over Bogota. So I'm just co totally obsessed with these. And, I, and at the Metropolitan Opera House, I did a large painting uh, of, of the scientist Oppenheimer, who created the atomic bomb in 1945. And it's, a, it's called um, Oppenheimer uh, Resurrected as Microwave ra Radiation Energy of the Universe. And it shows a disembodied form floating as microwaves. Wow. So I'm just really into this. So it's the next step in your evolution. So, uh, you know, is there, you know, at some point I was reading in uh, some of the description of the periods you went through, uh, <coughs> there, there was this, uh, some statement about people looking for the meaning of life. Right. Now, how do you personally relate to that, and how does that get expressed? The meaning of life. Um, I took a, many people might know this, a landmark education course once, and they had a great way of putting it. They said the meaning of life is that there is no meaning. It's what you bring to it. So basically, I bring in my own personal connections to what's ever there and yeah. express that. But I don't think life, per se, has a meaning. Mm -hmm. And does that sit well with you? Yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I know, because there is this, uh, it's a tough concept for people to manage at times right. that it would be, and I remember the phrase, it's empty and meaningless. And it's empty right. and meaningless that it's empty and meaningless. Right. Yeah. And I think people, uh, I was one of them, like to feel that I have control over my life. Mm -hmm. Like our world is going in a certain direction and that everyone's taken care of and that the government knows what they're doing and, <laughs> and the world just knows what it's doing and yeah. there's no problems. And yeah, we have control. You know, we have control, but frankly, I think we have no control whatsoever, and I think 
other forces, uh, which will be for another show, are actually having a lot to do with how this world operates, and a lot of people will be very upset by that. But um, my feeling is we have absolutely no control on, over our lives. We think we do, but we don't. We have zero. And uh, these paintings really get in a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, I guess, in a sense, for me, what, uh, you know, what I then go to is perhaps where we do have control is how we respond to all of that. Yeah, how we respond to it. So you can freak out and, and go to a bar and get smashed, or you can uh, sort of go with it. Yeah. I mean, to put it crudely. Yes. Know. Yes, absolutely. So in terms of, and I wanted, I, I have some notes here, so I just want to go over a couple of them. Um, you know, if you were going to define it, what would you say is the connection between space, space travel, and your art? The connection. Um... Well, uh, the way I've done space travel uh, with these mathematical theories is using chaos theory. And uh, chaos is that everything moves sort of randomly and that within the randomness you can find routes which actually do something for you. So my art really does the same thing. It's like taking chaos and just throwing it on the table and seeing if there's some kind of pattern that's useful to it that happens to look nice. Uh, so in that sense, they're similar. But um, um, when I did find the first route to the moon that wasn't ever used, but it was the first demonstration of my theories back in 1986, I didn't, f I didn't find it by using the computer. I found it doing a painting of the Earth-Moon system. And from that painting, I saw the route in it. And then I went to the computer, and actually it was there. So the painting can be used as a way to make scientific discovery. So that would be some kind of connection. And that's also described in the book. Hmm. So extraordinary, <laughs> actually. Uh, do you think that there's a particular message in what you do? Uh, everybody else I know thinks there is, mm -hmm. and I've been told this like every day that there's a gigantic one there, but I haven't seen it yet. And what do what are some of the things that come up that other people see? Um, I don't know. I mean, I've heard all kinds of things, but uh, everyone, everyone, especially recently, says there's a huge message in what you're doing. Just keep whatever you're doing, keep doing. You're going to get the message, mm. and uh, I say, okay, I'd be the first to know. Uh, so you were compelled to do math because you were good at it, and it brought you positive reinforcement and right. attention. Right. Who do you paint for? Um, 